Tonight we get irrational about Transformers on Boss Battle. Welcome everybody to Boss Battle number 80, a show in which the writers of Insert Coin to Begin get together and talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby, Bobby F. Jaytown, and uh, joining us as usual is Sorg. Sorg, what did you achieve in gaming this week? I conquered Max Payne 3. Nice. We knock it down to easy mode in the last couple levels. I just wanted nice. to finish it, and I was tired of getting stuck on the same guy. <laughs> the, the thing that usually makes me stop playing video games, I finished it. It was an amazing experience, top to bottom. Best 10 bucks I ever spent. So much so, I bought the song from the end of this game on my phone. Nice. Um, but no, it was really cool. Uh, it, it, it really shows how Rockstar is very cinematic. I, I really enjoy that. Now I can fully devote, as far as time on my Xbox, to Grand Theft Auto V, of which I already, of course, put a lot of time in. So um, I'm, I'm very, very excited about that. Other, other than that, I have gotten my wife addicted to threes, and she hates me for it. <laughs> so a little bit of a fight. Nice. Well, that's not nice, but... Um, uh, Chachi, what'd you do? What'd you cheat? Um, I, uh, played World of Tanks, so uh, we'll get into that later, I'm sure. Um, I, I got, I got the girlfriend addicted to Mario Kart, um, <laughs> which she loves me for. Best tweets ever. Um, and then, uh, I, I bought, it, here's the thing, sometimes, but not often, I want to play a racing game. But, Not NASCAR at 4 a.m. though. No, but I don't <laughs> want to play NASCAR. I don't want to play Forza. I want to play like a semi-serious and not semi-serious game. So I, I pick up a Need for Speed, which is on sale this week, which I'll get to later. Um, I wanted no, no, not... Underground or Underground Two, um, because the car customization in it is better. Um, but apparently they didn't make those for 360, so I got stuck with Carbon, um, which I uh, I beat in like a day and a half. Underground 2 is one of the best games ever. Exactly. Um, the the customization in that game is awesome. Plus they mm -hmm. have stuff like the uh, the photo shoot races, mm -hmm. <laughs> which were always just entertaining for me. Because <laughs> I mean you go you do stu cool stuff with like the neons and the paint jobs. Like, when I played Underground for the first time, uh, my car, I had a car that the uh, front bumper and headlights looked like a face, and I had it painted like a tiger. Nice. Um, with the orange neons and everything, and it was it was kind of, it was a lot of fun. Um, but, yeah, stuff like that. But uh, Carbon doesn't allow you to do all that much, uh, but uh, it, it got me through my fix. Um, which I, I also have to point out that I'm pretty sure it's the one they based the movie off of. <clears throat> At least in some small fashion. But uh, no one cares about the Need for Speed movie. Well, I'm Breaking Bad fans might. <laughs> Jesse Pinkman's in it. Huh. Um, no, even even then, no one cares about the Need for Speed movie. Yeah. And at this point in the in movie history, it's just a Fast and the Furious ripoff, which yeah, no one been wants. there, done that, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right, I I actually got back into um uh, Android games, and I know you're gonna yell at me for this, but I got back into Marvel Avengers again. Son of a um, man. I already got Iceman, so I'm slowing down again in it. Relapse. Um, <laughs> it was a, it was a slight relapse, um, and also Simpsons tapped out. I play, I've been playing that a lot too. Um, which it's, those kind of games are like, are fun distractions, you know, when things are going bad. Uh, but yeah, uh, th those, those games. And also Xbox live is having a sale. Their, their, um, Ooh. annual sale they always have, um, and Ridge Racer Unbound. And I thought it was one of the need for speed, uh, games, but it's actually Ridge, Ridge Racer Unbounded is on sale today for 75% off. Nice. And a couple other games, like there's a NASCAR game, Angry Birds, Star Wars, uh, Family Guy, that crappy game. Um, Midweek like Madness. Off. Actually, Midweek Madness is happening on Steam, and Gary's mm. mod is, I think, two fifty. I saw. Oh wow! So if you haven't jumped into that, I know my brother Matt is uh, super into it. So um, there's something. There's one game that's ninety three percent off, and that's Guardians of Mid Middle Earth. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So, and if you haven't picked up Portal Two, it's on there for pretty cheap. 
and Asura's Wrath, uh, Mass Effect 1. If you've never played those games, go pick those up, too. So there's a lot of cool stuff on Xbox Live that's on sale. So, all right, we're going to move into our next segment, which is Around the Net with Chachi. All right, um, it was a jam-packed week this week. Mm-hmm. Um, I passed over some, uh, some things that I, uh, quite frankly, don't deserve to be in the article. They're going to be their own posting because... I'll probably go on some tangents about it. Um, but I had to narrow it down some. And so I, I came up. Um, first off, let's start with the runners-up to uh, get them out of the way. Mm-hmm. Over at Insert Coin to begin at the bottom. <coughs> Sorry. Um, there is a post, uh, a couple of links at the bottom of every uh, video game post. Um, this week, it's a tattoo artist that does a sweet uh, Street Fighter Dalsum tattoo. Oh, wow. Uh, which, if you don't know, he's the stretchy one. Um, and he, Yoga he, Fire. Uh, what's that? Yoga Fire. Yeah. Um, he did it on the guy's calf. That looks sweet. Oh, did wow, it that is so awesome. That, he did it so that the uh, the tattoo uh, is yeah. at his foot. So it looks like he's actually stretching and uh, doing the move. Awesome. That is over, amazing uh, work. Yeah. And then over at Shutterstock, uh, a couple of uh, designers reimagined classic video games as romance novels. <laughs> um, so go over and check them out. They're kind of cool. Uh, but uh, it, down to the actual uh, content of the post. Uh, the I like greatest, the romance covers. The, uh, the Flappy Bird phenomenon uh, still isn't over. However, this will be the last time I post about it. Uh, the game is over. Just give up. Um, if Sesame Street does something, then you have no hope of ever beating it. Um, it and they released Flappy Bert. Is that a pigeon carrying him? I got three. Yes. That's amazing. Um, and the thing is, it, it, it's Sesame Street, but it's harder than the actual Flappy Birds game. Oh, I'm already doing better than the Flappy Birds game. Oh, no, uh, never mind. I thought it was harder. I already got three. It took me like an hour to get three. Oh, uh, see, I, I got up to 39 on mine, and it, I couldn't <laughs> get past three on this one. Still rough. Um, it's still very, very rough. I like yeah. The Daniel Bryan one was impossible. Uh, yeah. uh, also, speaking of uh, Sesame Street, I would just like to shame uh, Google Maps for not being able to show me how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I Google mapped Sesame Street, and it took me to this empty street in New Jersey. Oh, that's a bad neighborhood, Sesame mm. Street. <laughs> um, but uh, and next up, uh, there's a modder on uh, Facebook. He doesn't actually have a page or, or a what, website, but um, his MGX has been creating some amazing mods for NBA 2K14 PC version. Um, like a couple weeks ago, he did uh, – uh, Justice League versus Avengers Ooh. for the <laughs> players. And then he answered everyone's deep desire. And he released a Space Jam mod where it, it's uh, the Toon Squad versus the Monstars complete with Bill Murray. <laughs> um, so... Uh, it, Go over there. You can get to the Facebook page and see all the stuff that he's done. This is creepy. Um, like yeah, the, it looks uh, awesome and creepy at the, the same time. The movement is creepy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I mean, the look is there. The play, not so much. Um, but it, it's still it, it's still a cool idea, and uh, I applaud him for finally giving us Space Jam in a basketball can, game. I have a question. Can Michael Jordan's arm stretch out and slam the ball like he does at the end? Probably not. No. Um, I, I think... <laughs> He's actually in the game to begin with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think the guy is that good that he can change uh, physical attributes. Yeah, he did. And last but not least, and I, I'm checking for an update now. Uh, there's a couple of programmers who came up with a genius idea. Um, over at uh, Twitch.tv/slash Twitch plays Pokemon. <laughs> I uh, went to there they, today. What's that? I went there today, and I, my eyes were, like, going buggy. Yeah, it, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, what they did is they, uh, they programmed an IRC chat client to interact with a uh, 
Game Boy emulator to the point where uh, the chat room of the video is controlling the movement of the Pokemon game. Now, this is a cool concept, but it doesn't really work out all that great no. because it ends up, I mean, for the most part, every time I've watched it, they're just going back and forth in the menu. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, looking, looking left and right. <laughs> um, now, there is a lag in uh, response time, as there obviously should be, but the thing is getting crazy hits. I mean, in five days, it's gotten just under 12 million viewers. And currently, there are 88,000 people playing this game. It's insane. Wow. So, and it, it, the awesome thing is it shows you on the screen uh, the chat commands going into the Game Boy emulator. So you can see what moves are coming up. Um, but, I, I mean, it <laughs> it's a horrible, horrible execution just because... You have 88,000 people trying to control this. It's thing. a great thing yeah. if it's secret, right? I mean, because yeah. I, yeah, I, I jumped in there earlier today. I was like, oh, I guess I should get on, on off hours. There's probably no off peak hours on this thing anymore. Yeah. No, even at 8 o'clock in the morning, it. at 8 o'clock in the morning, there were still 30,000 people controlling. It's amazing. I, I'm amazed it hasn't crashed yet, just from over. I know. The, wo- and, the one and, thing I was uh, wondering about, I didn't. I, I saw that they had like the um, democracy and anarchy thing. I wasn't sure what that was about. Do you know what, anything about that? Where at? In, in the chat, like people As, were yeah, typing they're, they're anarchy it. and democracy. Oh, they're trying. People have been trying to uh, figure out a way to cooperate with each other to actually get stuff done. Oh, okay. Um, but the problem with that is that takes away the entire social interactive of the game. Mm -hmm. Because if you break it down to everybody trying to agreeing on what you're doing, then you might as well just have one person controlling the game. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And if you want that, then you need to log off the internet and go pick up your Game Boy and play the game. Play yourself. Yeah. (laughs) But, I, I mean, it, it's awesome that someone sat down and thought about doing this. It, and it's fun to watch. And I, I'm curious to see uh, how long it would, uh, it, how long it'll go on. I think I say, it's pretty simple, because there's only, what, like, there's very few inputs. Because it's a Game Boy game, right? So there's, eight. like, B, A, select, start, and the directions. Yeah, so, eight, eight total. Yeah, so you just have to interface that, and then that's... You know, that's it. Um, and I imagine as far as it crashing, they probably have something that's kind of gauging and flowing it into the game. Like there's a stop, like a dam, you know, what I mean, right. to, to push those through. Um, but uh, uh, the funny, the funniest thing I've seen so far is screenshots of uh, people actually accidentally releasing Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> because no. it, you have all these people controlling it. And the controls will get you places. Mm-hmm. So you'll act. Uh, someone will hit start, and it'll access the Pokemon menu. And because other people aren't paying attention to what's going on, it the Pokemon gets released. And I, like I say, what we're showing now to you guys here live on the stream, and and, and what you're going to see later here on video. Uh, this is this is live. This is what's happening right now. That's how quick yeah. it's going. This isn't a replay or anything like that. That's what's happening here on Tuesday night, uh, as far as this chat room goes. And you see them walking around, selecting emails. You see it flying by on the right there. Wonder, in the I video. wonder how many times they've saved the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. But, uh, it, yeah, it's just a really cool idea, and I'm glad someone did it. Just to see what happened. Mm-hmm. And awesome. they did. <laughs> you mm-hmm. And exactly what happened is it's a clusterfuck. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you have 7,500 people trying to go left, and 7,500 people trying to go right, and then the rest are all hitting random commands. Wow. All right, well, we're so, going to move on to our next story, which is... Uh, our next segment, which is uh, things you should be made aware of, which is our news stories. Um, and they're releasing a new Transformers game, uh, High Moon Studios. But there's good news and there's bad news, guys. Uh, the good news is 
it's going to feature the continuity continu continu I don't know how to continuation? say continuation continuity of uh, the High Moon Studios Transformers games, uh, the, the War for Cybertron and all that stuff. Uh, but they're they're adding in Michael Bay's Transformers verse at the same time. Okay. Which okay. I don't know how that's going to work, but it's going to be kind of a odd combination for the game. But I guess it's good if you want like a lot of Transformers in your game. I guess see, I haven't um, I haven't gotten too far in the first game. So mm -hmm. I don't know where all they go with the continuity on this one, but it looks like it reflects kind of original, like original it's Transformers more, for yeah. the most part. Uh, yeah, right down to the Unicrons and everything. Like, and we, but we have Dinobots, and supposedly we're going to mm -hmm. have Dinobots and, and Predacons, and we know how kind of off we go with the Michael Bay stuff. So mm -hmm. I wonder how that works. You know, I like okay, we're marrying these things. It's like, but I feel like things are going to conflict. But but as I said, as far as are we worried about the game because of that? I'm not. If they're as good as, if they're just a sequel to the games that have been, that first game mm -hmm. is amazing. It is everything yeah. I've ever wanted in a Transformers game. Uh, the second one sound looks like it, it's it's more of the same and even better. And to see they're doing another one, just because they're they're marrying it maybe to the styles or maybe kind of connecting some of the storylines with the Michael Bay stuff. I don't hate the new Transformers mm -hmm. as a whole. I love the cartoon, the Prime cartoon that they put out as an old Transformers fan. Just loved it. Had a great wrap-up with that movie. Um, um, the problem with the Michael Bay movies are the Michael Bay movies. Um, and, <laughs> the problem and, with the Michael Bay movies is Michael Bay. <laughs> well, I, I commented on this post because I'm very passionate about my Transformers. Yep. I own three copies of the 1986 uh, animated movie, uh, and I have the soundtrack on my iPhone. Um, nice. And, and Stan, Stan Bush Lee been... follows me, or not Stan Lee. Wow. Stan Bush? Yeah, Stan Bush follows me on Twitter. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but, you know, we're worried about the Michael Bay movies because we put people in there. We put our Shia LaBeoufs and, and everything mm -hmm. in there. Uh, when we have hot robot on robot action, this these guys have been doing really good. We did, they, they did really good with the cartoon. They've been doing really good with the video games. Not worried about this at all. They can do whatever they yeah. want with the universe. You know they, why they, we're not worried about the uh, Transformers video games? <laughs> because when it boils down to it, we want giant robots that we know and we want giant robots that we know to beat up other giant robots that we know. That's right. That's right. I would just be yeah. so much happier if they just took the Transformers and did Pacific Rim with them. Yeah. Right. That all, would be great. all we need, like Sword said, ultimately when it comes down to it, all we need is hot robot on robot destruction action. Well, they, they said uh, the one good thing is multiplayer is coming back. Uh, and those games are awesome for multiplayer, um, mm -hmm. but it's it's gonna it's gonna be focused on the story. I guess is they're gonna try to find this dark spark, which is said to rival the the Matrix, mm -hmm. uh, and, and as far as power goes. And both factions of the Transformers are going to be going after it. So we'll see how that works out. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Also, I did a search because I was unaware of it. But hey, did you guys know that the Transformers MMO actually launched? It did. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> What? I did not know like, that. I remember that being a thing. We were at a Comic Con in like 2011. I thought I read a yeah. thing that it was still coming out. No. I, Why I don't I know to... about this? Exactly. Chachi, you're my news source. Why don't I know about this? Because I didn't know about this. I didn't know <laughs> did they you... actually launched. Sorry, did you know I that made, there's a I made, Transformers? I, I made a, a goddamn Destructicon named Bat Acetron. Yeah. <laughs> I made I made a Mayhematron. That's around here somewhere. I mean, uh, and, you know, I thought, you know, hey, you guys have my email address. Did we, did we signed up for a mailing list, didn't we? This. Yeah. I mean, the lanyard I got for it wore out by now. Exactly. They dropped the construction balls. <laughs> the wrecking yeah, balls. They did. <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah, right. I'll be I'll be playing that this week. Yeah, I might be <laughs> Transformers Universe, right? Yeah, all Make I did a note was to yourself. Transformers MMO. Hmm. All right, uh, we're gonna move on to our next story. 
Sorry, What's Bobby. Go no, ahead. we're not moving to the next story because I'm completely <laughs> booting up the Transformers MMO. I'm oh, enlisting right now. You guys, you know what? I'm just going to keep it on this shot and good luck with the rest of the show because I'm picking my allegiance. <laughs> Your so story's next, Sorg. Oh, I've got to be the autobus of my story. Yeah, your story is next. What's my story? Your uh, iPhone uh, NES emulator game. Oh, yeah. I talked about thing. this. This was my awesome thing of the week uh, on the awesome cast. Um, so so basically, of course, you know, the big, you know, kind of argument between Android versus iPhone is you can't get your emulators on there, you know, et cetera. But they're, they're finding some new interesting ways to do that. Um, now, of course, bad example now because it kind of stopped working for me. But so your, your, your mileage may vary on this. Um, if you go do a web search for web NES, um, you can find a place to install a web app. And this is instead of an app that goes through the app store, it actually is uh, made with HTML5. It basically runs in the browser just like that uh, Flappy Bird. By the way, that Flappy Bird I installed as an icon on my phone so I can play it nice. anytime I want. And it loads right up into Flappy Bird right there. Um, but now I can also do it with this web NES. Now it is, does load with some um, open source uh, NES typey games and has the controls. And you also have a sideways version there as you usually have. Um, how do I get ROMs into it? My legally acquired ROMs for Super Mario Bros. 3. Um, it connects actually directly into Dropbox. And so all you have to do is put your ROMs in the Dropbox, which you can get a free account. I think they have two gigs, five gigs free. If you want to do that, ROMs, I'm sure you can put the entire NES library in there if you happen to have it in ROM form. Um, yeah, you can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, and, Which is perfectly legal. And it loads, if you own all the games, <laughs> sure. If you're that guy like like Chachi was looking at on eBay nope. a few months ago, yeah. He's that gonna, guy he's, can do it. No problem with that. Um, but... Uh, Audio doesn't work except with headphones plugged in, and it doesn't run completely at full speed even on the brand new uh, iPhone 5S. Uh, another side one: there's other things. Um, uh, Tweeted you can check out on Awesomecast, and I'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll put together an article about this so you can, you can check it out. Um, but there's also a Game Boy, and there's other emulators too, but they're a little more tricky. There's a rolling back the date on your phone kind of trick to it. I think I have to roll back to like 2009 or something maybe. Um, mm -hmm. And then it in, again installs a web app, but in kind of a different way. Um, it seemed to be a little more finicky of the old version, but there's a new one that's just a Game Boy emulator. And I think it works pretty much the same way where it connects to a Dropbox. Actually, I <laughs> this is sketchy because I think actually that one, um, it links you to a site that you can download ROMs directly onto your phone. Cool. That's a little sketchy in the yeah. long run. Uh, so there's options out there if you're into emulating. Again, look up Web NES and uh, check out the recent GBA uh, iPhone emulator. We've tweeted it uh, again on the InsertCoin uh, TB uh, Twitter uh, as well over on the AwesomeCast Twitter as well. Go to either of those pages here, and it should be you know in in the first page there. And like I said, we'll we'll pull them together in the notes and everything for uh, InsertCoin to begin dot com as well. Or awesome. Or if you have an Android, you can just download one of the thousands of apps for yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> one thousand emulators. Well, you know, but some people don't. Let's yeah, just I acknowledge know. some people don't, you know, mm -hmm. and say, well, now you can get that too. So everybody awesome. has an option now. All right, our next story uh, is a little bit of uh, – it's very sad for me, guys, because as you, as you know, uh, my game of the year pick was Bioshock Infinite. Mm-hmm. Um, the studio Irrational Games, which made all the Bioshock games today, announced that they are shutting down. Aww. Uh, they're going, uh, uh, Ken Levine, the founder and, uh, head of the studio, announced today he's going to downsize to about 15 workers, and he's going to focus on more story-driven, um, digital games. Okay. Um, okay. This might be good, um, but he's not going to do any more big blockbusters like he's done in the past. Um, he handed the reins of uh, Bioshock over to 2K Games, uh, so 2K is going to work on them, kind of probably like uh, they did with Bioshock 2. Um, but he's not—he's no longer going to be involved in the Bioshock games, which is kind of sad because I, I, after Infinite, I really wanted to see where he was going to take the series mm -hmm. next. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and without him working on it, it's going to be like... Uh, and it sounds like... Because, I mean, to make a game at this scale is a mm -hmm. lot. How many years did it take for them to do this one? Yeah, and that's that's one? another reason why he decided to downsize because of just how long it took yeah, and yeah. how many times they had to go back over the game and just fix everything and get it ready. And 
you know, because that game was in development for a long time. I have a friend that uh, that is a game designer from that that I went to school with at, at the Art Institute, and mm-hmm. uh, I remember um, probably within last year or two, I was talking with him, and he was already talking about retirement from the game industry because wow. of ha- because of the 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 stress. You know, it's a very 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 tough industry with a lot of burnout and a bunch of young kids coming in. Um, so to, to have this guy at this high a level, mm-hmm. you know, it makes sense. You know, it says, okay, we're going to do this kind of game because it's, a, it's a stress. It's taking a toll on him. I'm sure do mm-hmm. something as massive as what, uh, Bioshock Infinite was. Well, it, the thing is <laughs> in an industry like that, mm-hmm. it, it, I imagine there are some months where you're just focusing on blades of grass. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, you, but he's he's also like the head guy. So I don't yeah. think he's looking at the blade of grass. There's some grunt there looking at <laughs> blades of grass. I Somebody mean, that's what who, we've come was, to. That's why. Who? That's why it's how many millions of dollars to make these games because somebody had to make the grass wasn't it wasn't somebody on on skyrim's job just to do one rock <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like, right? that was their entire job of the whole project yeah. it was just right. ro- working so, on one I mean, rock and, and no matter how high you are in the company I, i'm sure that it, you hear or you comment on every single fucking rock in the game that's yeah. the worst part <laughs> That's definitely the worst. So you you may not be directly making sure that that rock has the right angle in it, mm-hmm. or is the right size. Why is this rock but pink? You're over here? sure as hell gonna hear about it. Yeah. And you're gonna be like, no, that rock, that rock looks like a stop sign cut in half, and I don't <laughs> like that. Yeah. So I, I mean, ultimately, when it comes down to it, you're eventually gonna want to stop thinking about the fact that that rock is too even. Mm-hmm. Um, another so, part of the story also, um, Cliff Blazinski announced that he's no longer going to make uh, games that are on CD-ROM. Yeah, he's C- going what? to CD-ROM? also stick with Who's doing that. <laughs> well, like like uh, disc-based games, basically, like for the 360 and stuff like that. He's only going to be working on digital games from now on. I, I saw said, I saw a version of the story. It, it sounded like he's aiming for PC in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. uh, yeah, that's exactly what it sounded like because. Mm-hmm. He just wants to focus on like like Ken Levine, story driven, mm-hmm. more like mm-hmm. intimate games. Um, because he's I, he's tired of like the 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 grandiose yeah. uh, releases and stuff machine. like that. It's a machine. Well, see, there's a plus side to that. Mm-hmm. No more blades of grass for him. No, no. Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> it, it comes back to the grass and the rocks because whether they want to argue it or not. Console gamers are all about the look. Mm-hmm. They want that high res HD gorgeous background. Mm-hmm. Yep. When it comes to PC, they want a story or a game that they can play for thousands of hours. Mm-hmm. That they can mod but, themselves and make beautiful. Right. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Because a, a, a PC uh, modder isn't worried about the fact that that rock over there looks like a stop sign cut in half Mm -hmm. because he wants that rock to blow up whenever someone goes within five feet of it. I love (laughs) the analogies that we're coming up with on this episode, by the way. (laughs) So, well, I mean, that's, it, it, it fits. It's, it's exactly what the difference is. Mm -hmm. The console gamer wants that blade of grass to be the right shade of green and to look like a blade of grass. The PC gamer wants that blade of grass to sprout legs and stab someone in the throat. <laughs> oh my! All right, but okay. it, yeah, and that's and that's what it is. Because uh, I mean, a, a prime example. Go back and look at Portal One versus Portal Two. Yeah. Portal One, while it didn't look bad, is a prime example of the difference in PC gaming and mm-hmm. console gaming they were all- because Portal 2 looked immaculate. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Portal 2 on sale now on xbox.com. <laughs> <laughs> on Xbox. <laughs> and I love the Portal games. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, yeah. I, I don't care what the Portal game well, looks like ultimately as long portal- as the story is amazing. And Portal started as a tech demo but made by students. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. 
and they just improved on it and and just picked it up and made, and released it as a game. So, so. Uh, you know what? I applaud the guys that in uh, whatever the company is called. I uh, it's not. Them. It's not Epic. He, he he went off to do his own thing, right? Like he left Epic. Or, yeah. Or is he? Yeah, just, he left. Okay. Okay, which is isn't that interesting? Like all these developers, um, um, uh, Carmack just left it, it get it software, so he could concentrate on 3D. Yeah, and, well, didn't wow. he leave for Oculus Rift? Yeah, Oculus Rift. He's going to yeah. go. Yeah, he's working for them. I think he's he's like a VP or a creative director or something, something important over at Oculus Rift. So that really, if that guy went to do that, this guy develops rockets for fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not rocks, rockets. That guy, <laughs> that guy cares about what that blade of grass looks like. <laughs> Do you All remember, right. like, like this guy went and developed the the iPhone versions of his own games just because he wanted to. Yeah, he didn't have to do that. He could have just like you intern, go do this. Go make me a Doom. I am the great Carmack. <laughs> This pre- this pleases me. <laughs> this pleases me. He's I mean, probably the only guy in the game industry that uh, designs rocks for fun. <laughs> he does. He does. I mean, he's the guy behind the 3D engine for most of uh, id Software's games, which means he's all about the rocks. <laughs> what are you doing? That oh, guy, we're gonna sleep. That guy rock. wakes up at three o'clock in the morning because he can't sleep. And sits down and designs a 3D image of a rock that is far better than the rock he developed two months ago because he couldn't sleep. And, the fun- and then, go ahead. And then he makes a trailer for the rock with like rotation around the rock and like dubstep. Wow, wow. <laughs> this guy. But the, the thing is, he's so good at it. It's like the Matrix. He looks at the code and sees the rock and says, "Damn, that's a fine rock." <laughs> he named it Dwayne Johnson. Too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, we're going to move on to our final story. Oh, please, God. Which is actually our boss battle question. <laughs> uh, Riz made a list this week of his uh, top five gaming couples. Um, we're gonna. We're not gonna like. We're gonna touch on a couple of them here. Um, uh, Shepard and uh, anybody you romance in uh, Mass Effect was number five. Uh, Mario and Princess Peach, number four. Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man, which he had, he wonders why they never got married, because they both have the same last name. Maybe that's why they didn't get married. It's illegal in some states. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Zelda and Link actually came in at number two. Mm. And number one on his list was uh, Cafe and Andrew from The Legend of Zelda games. Huh. Which is kind of odd, but uh, I wish he was here to explain himself. Yeah. Uh, he's I in wish the chat he was room here he to explain to, himself. To, to uh, he he just come into the chat room. So if he wants to explain himself via the the uh, chat there. Before we move on, can someone <laughs> write down the fact that uh, the show title should be "Damn, that's a fine looking rock." <laughs> I like that. I like it. Uh, but our boss battle question is, or our final battle question is, um, what are your picks for the best video game couple? Uh, who who wants to start? You know, I started thinking about this, and the only thing I could think about were. Like Resident Evil Four, when you had the girl you were leading around, which I'm like, no, that's weird because I was like a teenager or something. <laughs> yeah, then the I kept, then I went to like Max Payne Three, where you're also like trying to rescue a girl and like leading her around and stuff, which was kind of the same situation. Like that's mm-hmm. the only like relationships and games I'm thinking. I mean, it's the kind of games I'm playing, but other than Zelda, uh, I, I can't really recall. A lot of love story, you know. Yeah. Um, definitely not Metal Gear. I have two. Okay. Um, number one, uh, the guy and his horse um, from Shadows of the Colossus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, Shell and the Companion Cube from Portal. Oh. Hmm. I like That's that. A good one. I like that. Um, both of those are illegal in most states. <laughs> yeah, well, so were mine in the long run. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would, I would probably go with John Morrison and his wife, even though their relationship wasn't perfect. They both loved each other, and it was awesome. So oh, you know. I got one. I got one. Um, the guy from Shenmue and the 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 little bubble toys. 
<laughs> or the forklift. And forklifts. Yes. 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 <laughs> all right. Nobody's uh, going to get Shenmue is all, references. Is that all we have on this subject? Nobody's going to get Shenmue references. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. You can uh, follow us on Twitter on at InsertCoinTV. Uh, you can go to our website. Uh, new articles going up daily on InsertCoinToBegin.com. Uh, you can join us here live every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock on, in, on uh, live.sorgatronmedia.com. And uh, Chachi, if you want to touch on Chachi Plays a little bit here. Uh, ChachiPlays.com. New information will be going up shortly. Donut. The, the, don't, the donut button's up. <laughs> donut button. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> but uh, there'll be other details uh, at going up uh, involving the donate button uh, real soon. All right. And that'll do it for us. Game over, guys.